Welcome to the Victorious Life TV broadcast. I'm Lisa Boldo, and I'm super excited to be here with you tonight. Of course, I'm always excited to be with you to bring you the truth from the Word of God. So before we dive in, Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you that your Word is true. Lord, I just pray that every person under the sound of my voice tonight, Lord, would receive your your truth, your word with gladness, Lord, and that it will not be stolen away from the enemy. And Father, I just thank you right now. I pray that every heart would receive this, receive it, and that it would just go down so deep into your roots, you watching, and it will change your life forever. And this is my prayer. Father, we thank you. We magnify your son, Jesus, Lord. And we thank you for all your blessings, Lord. We thank you for you have given us everything. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So welcome again. I see you guys jumping on. It's so wonderful to be with you tonight. So we're going to dive right into the Word of God. Is that okay? You know me, because then I'll be like, oh no, we're out of time. <laughs> okay. So in this broadcast tonight, I'm talking about the secret to the miracle working power of God. Okay. This, I mean, and this is something that if you really get this tonight, I'm telling you, I believe your whole life will change. It will change. And so I want you to stay with me here because I'm going to give you such good stuff tonight. And listen, it's not coming from me. It's coming from the word of God. So it's all good, you know, but, and this means that you can walk in love. You can walk in health. You can have great relationships and you can do the works that Jesus did. You can take sickness off of people's bodies and destroy the works of the devil. I am so passionate about this. So let's dive right in. So, you know, there are many, many Christians who they love God. They really, really do, right? But they haven't understood this thing called the mystery, okay? The mystery. Trek with me here because this is really important. They haven't understood the mystery that Paul talked about that was hidden through the ages, okay? Which is the very, very thing. And, and listen, it's the secret that makes Christianity work. But here's the deal. It's not really a secret because it's been revealed, right? And this, this particular thing, it's the reason that you can do the works that Jesus did. I can do the works that Jesus did, right? It's so good and it will change your life. So here we go. First, Colossians 1, 26, 27. And here it is. The mystery that was hidden for, okay, first, I'm sorry, Colossians 1, 26, 27 talks about the mystery that was hidden for ages and generations, but is now revealed to his saints, right? To God's saints. Who is that? That's you and me. Because once you're born again, you're no, no longer a sinner, but he calls us saints, okay? So it says, the mystery that was hidden for ages and generations, but is now revealed to his saints, to whom God has chosen, right? God has chosen to make known this mystery among the Gentiles, right? The glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you. Oh my gosh, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Okay, this is so important, you know, Several years ago, and when I say several, I'm talking, I think, seven years ago, okay? I was on my way to this woman's home to minister healing to her. I'd gotten a request from her daughter, and she said, can you come over and pray for my mom? I'm like, yes, absolutely. And I remember driving there, and on the way there, I said to the Lord, you know, I was just talking with, with, with God, right? And I said, Lord, <laughs> I said, when she gets healed... I said, and she says, you know, she asked, how did you do this? What do I say to her? Right? This is just, you know, I was having dialogue with God. I was pretty new, you know, to the, the healing and all this. And it was awesome. And immediately the Holy Spirit said, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And I went, oh, I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, that's right. That's it. It's perfect. That's the answer, right? So when someone says, how did you do this? Because it wasn't you, it wasn't me, but it was Christ in you, the hope of glory. Okay, so this is what it means. This is what it means to be a Christian. 
It means that you understand the good news, right? The gospel, the good news of Jesus, right? That he took the sins of the world, right? So that the world, you and me, wouldn't have to pay for our own sins and, right? And or end up going to hell. Jesus took it all for us. He took it, but God didn't even stop there. Christ died for our sins, but God resurrected Jesus on the third day, right? And now Jesus is very, very much alive, very much alive and sits at the right hand of honor next to God the Father, right? He's seated. And the Bible says that when you received Christ, you were crucified with him, literally, right? Your sins were wiped out, right? And because Jesus paid the price with his life for your sins, right? So you, you didn't have to. So you understand this, right? And then Romans 6.6 6 says, We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. Boom. That's why Jesus took it. So because so I just had a question come in and the woman said, how can Jesus hate sin but love the sinner? Well, that's exactly right. He hates sin because it destroys people whom he loves. So anyway, and then Ephesians, okay, Romans 6, 4 says that just as Christ was raised from the dead, we were also raised to new life, right? So when, when Christ died, when you received Christ, you were crucified with him, meaning your old life, boom, nailed to the cross, all your sins, gone, wiped out, forgiven, done, right? That's the good news of Jesus. But then it doesn't even stop there. The Holy Spirit comes and gives you a new spirit, his spirit mixed with your spirit. Now he recreates you. That's why you become a new creation. The Bible says, okay, I got a little ahead of myself, but Ephesians 2, 6, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him. I'm going to explain this in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Why? In order that in the coming ages, like now, right? He might display, display, show the surpassing riches of this grace demonstrated by his kindness to, to, to us in Christ. Okay. Let me explain this. Okay. Christ in you, the hope of glory. I'm telling you, stay with me here because this is going to change everything for you. Christ in you, the hope of glory, Christ in you, Christ in you. Okay. And I'm going to explain this about being seated in heavenly places with him. So Jesus died for you. You died with him, right? Your old spirit has been made new by the Holy Spirit. Okay. You've been given his spirit. Oh my gosh. It's so great. So by this, you were made a new creation. Jesus was resurrected. You were raised up with him, right? You were resurrected with him to new life. Okay. He was seated at the right hand of God this is so good. And now you're seated with him in heavenly places while his Holy Spirit is at work in you on the earth. So we're seated with him. What does that mean? That means you can rest from your works because as you go, you minister to the sick. You lay hands on people. It's God uses your body, but it's him doing the work. It's the Holy Spirit, Christ in you, that's doing the work. It's, it's awesome. So the Holy Spirit now works in you, in the earth. So in you, through you. Mm. So a great exchange is what happened. A great exchange took place. Oh, this is so good. So now you're a joint heir with Jesus, right? You now represent him on this earth. And this is what Christianity is all about. It's what we're supposed to do. We, Jesus gave us the baton basically. And like now we're supposed to carry on his ministry in the earth. What did he come to do? Well, he came to save the world, right? But now he needs us to be his mouthpiece and come in demonstration, not just with words, but in demonstration of his power. How? By the Holy Spirit working through you, in you and through you. Okay. So, oh, this is so good. You know, without Jesus, Everyone that walks around on the earth, they're dead spiritually, right? Emotionally, because they're attached to the things of the world and on their way physically. Because guess what? If they get sick, they have no clue how to fight. 
they, they, you know, it's the doctors or they die. Like that's what they believe. They don't even know what's available to them. And that's why you and I have such an important work to do. This is not just for the preacher. You know, I say this all the time or the apostle or, you know, this one or that. No, it's for believers. It's for you. It's for me. And so, oh my gosh, we've really, you know, it's about setting the captives free. That's what we're supposed to do, right? You've got to set the captives free. But how do you do this? You got to understand a few things, okay? First, Christ lives in you. I tell you, this is not preached enough. And, you know, I was just talking with a couple today and, and they were like, yeah, you know, like this is really good about Christ in you because people, they don't know how to access the power of God. So they're praying, God, heal this person. Please heal this person. Please. That's not how they're going to get healed because Jesus already paid the price. He needs us to be yielded vessels to represent him on the earth. He will work through us, but we've got, he needs our bodies to do it. You know how the Bible says that the devil roams around like a roaring lion seeking somebody to devour. Well, guess what? God is looking for someone to show himself strong through. That needs to be you. That needs to be me, right? Mm. Okay, so like I said, number one, Christ lives in you. This is the absolute key to miracle working power because it's the Holy Spirit, the very spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, okay? Number two, in 2 Corinthians 6.16, God said, I will live in them and walk among them. I will, it's like he'll live in you, he'll walk in you, he'll talk in you, I'll dwell in them, I'll live in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Mm, that's awesome. You know, the prophets in the Old Testament didn't have what we have today. The Holy Spirit would come upon them and they would speak, right? They were messengers of God, but they didn't have the Holy Spirit resident, living, living, dwelling, who never leaves us living on the inside of them. They didn't have that. We have that. I'm telling you there in the cloud of witnesses going, you believers, you need to understand what you have and go for it. I mean, oh my gosh, right? So this is why you absolutely want to make sure that you're born again, because if you're not, then you don't have that, that you can't be sealed with that Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit, you know, that comes to live in you. So we are here representing Jesus on the earth, right? We represent Jesus physically, just like Jesus represented the Father, our Father, right? He's our Father too. <laughs> so we're supposed to be Jesus to the world. This is who you really are. You know, you want to know your identity? Your identity is Christ in you the hope of glory. You know, I was talking to someone last week and they were talking about how in these churches, um, people have cliques, right? And they seem like they accept certain people. They don't accept other people. That is junk. That is absolute baloney. And I thought to myself, why do people even concern themselves with that junk? Because that's what it is, right? We're supposed to love God and love people like we love ourselves, right? I mean, some people don't love themselves, but what I'm saying is, when you receive Christ and you transform through the word of God, because I'm telling you, transformation only comes by the word of God, hearing it and renewing your mind to it, saying yes, looking at the word and saying, hmm, okay, um, yeah, I'm going to live my life this way. I got to change this. I got to change that. That's how you do it. But you know, so I'm hearing about these clicks and I'm saying that is, why even concern yourself with what anyone thinks about you. You only need to care what God thinks about you. But I'll tell you this, if you love God and you love people, people will seek you out because you'll be full of the wisdom of God's word and you'll be full of love for God's people. That anytime you speak, people are going to want to hear what you have to say. Now, religious spirits, they won't like you. <laughs> they won't like you. And they'll say things about you and who cares? It doesn't matter because guess what? You're going to be doing, you're going to have such peace knowing that God is pleased with you because you're going to separate yourself from the things of the world. Okay. You know, 
God wants to set up his kingdom and he wants to do it through you. Yay. Okay. Galatians 4, 6, God sent the spirit of his son, right? To live in you crying, Abba, father, right? Ephesians 3, 20. I love it. But most people don't read the whole verse right now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond right and above anything that you could ever ask or think or imagine. And they stop there. Uh, uh, according to the power that works in us. What's that power? The Holy Spirit, Christ in you, the hope of glory. I'm like, ah, but it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Okay. That's how God can do exceedingly abundantly. He still needs someone to work through. Okay. Mm. You know, I think of the apostle Paul, right? When he was still Saul and he was on the road to Damascus and he got knocked off of his horse or whatever he was on, right? He got knocked off and Jesus came in the big bright light. Well, he lost his sight for three days, right? But guess what? When God God didn't just restore his eyesight, God sent a person. God sent, you know, Ananias and said, go lay hands on Paul that he may regain his sight and then, you know, get him baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. God didn't just restore his eyesight. He used a person. So what I'm saying is, you know, after Jesus was resurrected, he never healed another person personally. He sent the Holy Spirit to believers to do the work through them. And he, so that's what we have today. Okay. So Romans 8:37 says that Christ in you makes you more than a conqueror. Ah, right? Second Corinthians 2 Corinthians 2.14 says that Christ in you always, right, causes you always to triumph. Christ in you causes you to triumph. You've got to know your rightful position and you've got to enforce it. Okay, does that mean that resistance or attacks are never going to come? At, not at all. That is not what that means. They may even show up even more. But listen, you know what? We've got to be militant. Like, I know I'm in training. I had some attacks come to me this week as I was going, you know, I go went and ministered. I see, you know, people getting healed and then boom, there was an attack that came, resistance. And I'm like, mm, no. And I'm telling you, God wants to train you and, and through his word so that you know with confidence, with boldness, that his word is absolute truth. Because I'm telling you, when you don't see something right away or when resistance comes, the enemy's going to be poking. See, God's word's not true. See, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Eh, eh, eh. And that's when the voice, you're giving voice to God's word, speaking and declaring needs to be louder than that voice. You don't fight thoughts with thoughts. You fight thoughts out loud with words. That's how you resist the enemy. What did Jesus do? It is written. It is written. It is written. You submit to God. Submit yourself to God. Resist the enemy. Submitting yourself to God, you speak that word out loud. You do that word. And, and you resist the enemy. He comes at you. You come, at, you come harder with the word, with the truth of God's word. And guess what? He will flee. He'll be like, mm. right? Can't get him right now. Might have to come back later. But here's the thing. Oh, this is really good. Okay. Sickness tries to come at you with a symptom. You have to say no in Jesus' name. Get out. Go now in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, I've had to do this and bam, gone. It, I'm telling you, God's word is truth and it works. You've got to know your rightful position, Christ in you, so that when you're speaking, Christ in you is speaking. I heard this, um, um, this saying, like, when you speak God's word, heaven agrees and hell obeys. I love that. Mm. Has to, because everything has to bow to the name of Jesus. Everything. Okay. And so just remember that Jesus took the stripes and completely paid for your healing, but not just yours, for everyone, for everyone in the world. And it's always God's will for you to win. Always. Because Jesus won. Matthew 16, 19 says, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven and God in heaven will allow whatever you allow on earth, but he will not allow anything you don't allow. Don't allow sickness. 
don't allow disease, get rid of devils. If you're doing something in your life where you know that you're living a certain lifestyle that's not lined up with God's word, you need to stop that. You need to repent and turn immediately from that. Why give the devil a foothold, right? You need to repent, get rid of it, and make yourself say no. Uh-uh. Because you know what? Sin cost Jesus his life. Mm. And when we think about that, it's like, why would we want to continue in anything that hurt him so much? Right? Mm. <sighs> Don't treat the common cold any different than you would treat cancer. I'm so serious. It's no different for God. Sickness is sickness. Disease is disease. Devils are devils, right? You are more than a conqueror through Christ in you. Okay? You are a crime stopper for the kingdom. That's what I'm telling you. I'm like, whew, wherever you see it, you need to go after it. And you need to you need to destroy the works of the devil like Jesus did, right? We don't go after people. We go after sickness, disease, and devils. That's the authority that Jesus said in Luke 10, 19. I give you authority over all the power of the enemy. So what does that mean? That means the enemy has power, right? We're not dealing with flesh and blood but powers, principalities, right? Jesus gave us authority over all of it. It's not our authority, it's his. He gave it to us. Christ in us. We speak, bam, it's got to obey, okay? So we don't go after people. That He didn't give us authority over people. He gave us authority over the works of the devil. Sickness, disease, devils. Mm. Anyway, okay. And he said, and nothing shall by any means harm you. That's at the end of Luke 10, 19. So you've got to believe that. Believe that. Okay. First Corinthians six seventeen is one of my favorite scriptures in all the Bible. He who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. That's awesome. So it's your spirit and Jesus spirit. Remember, it's like... He wants to work through you. He wants to live big and do great things through you. Will you let him? Yes. Right? So you're one spirit with the Lord. Don't separate what God has joined together. It's like marriage, right? We're the bride of Christ. He has joined us together with him. Okay. You're one spirit together. He's in you. You're in him. It's beautiful. <laughs> so again, when you speak to sickness and disease or devils, God is speaking. Hell has to obey. Know the authority that you've been given and walk in it. Okay? Colossians 3.3. 3, For you died to this life, right? You died to self, right? You pick up your cross. You're doing it God's way now. And your real life is hidden with Christ in God. How? Your real life, the real you, it's your life is hidden with Christ in God. How? Christ in you. It's Christ in you that lives now, right? You need to let Christ in you. Okay. Christ in you causes your life to be hid with God. You always say like, so when the devil comes looking for you, he needs to find Jesus, right? So it's kind of like you're in Christ and Christ is in you, right? So the devil needs to see Jesus. <laughs> so good, right? <clears throat> the world needs to see Jesus living through you, in you and through you, loving them, not worried about the petty things. Just lift people up, build them up, even if they're unlovely, build them up, be a cheerleader, be that encourager, lift people up with the word of God. Mm. Trust me, you do that, they'll want to know God. They'll be like, and, and stay consistent. That's the thing, stay consistent. Let Christ in you keep you consistent. Okay. So Galatians 2:20, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I live, but Christ who lives in me, in you, right? And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So guess what? This is so cool because when you go to lay hands on someone, you need to be at rest. You sit with God in heavenly places. You just, you're just, you're going after it, right? And then the Holy Spirit is the one doing the work 
in the name of Jesus, right? Unclean spirits, come out in Jesus' name, you with authority. I speak to all sickness, all disease. You be, you know, you go. I command you to leave now in Jesus' name, right? Be healed head to toe in Jesus' name or head to toes. Mm, they have two feet, right? Mm, I love it. Ten toes. Anyway, head to toes. Love it. In Jesus' name. Mm, and you speak with authority, not from just here, but from your belly, from where... Uh, where the Holy Spirit is. Okay. Okay. I'm telling you, if you're someone that hates to see people sick and hurting like I am, you are going to want to go after this with everything you've got. You are a crime stopper for the kingdom of God. Okay? You want to dive into the word of God and let the Holy Spirit speak to you and give you fresh revelation from heaven, from his word. I'm telling you, it's never ending. It's beautiful. You get into the word for yourself. And the Holy Spirit will start revealing things to you. Like, what does that mean? All of a sudden, you know what it means. And you're like, whoa, that's awesome. So remember these three things. God gave you his word, the sword of the spirit, to cut off the enemy's head, destroy the works of the devil, right? The sword of the spirit is the word of God. He gave you his word. Number two, he gave you his name. He gave you his name to go in his authority in my name, right? In my name, you will do these things. Faith in the name of Jesus. Speaking the name of Jesus breaks chains. It's the name of Jesus. Faith in that name. <clears throat> okay. And number three, he gave you his spirit, which we've been talking about in this whole broadcast tonight, to live in you and to work the works of God through you. The miracle working power of God lives in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Okay, so guess what? It's up to you and me to enforce God's kingdom on this earth. We've got to do it. It's up to us. Christ has already won. He's already won the victory. And all we need to do is walk from that place of victory. That's why this broadcast is called The Victorious Life. Because when you, when you do the word of God, you do the word of God, you do the works of God, but the Holy Spirit is doing it through you, you're a vessel. You're a yielded vessel and you will always walk in God's glory, right? You lay hands on the sick, you speak, they get healed, God gets the glory. Jesus gets the glory. How cool is that to be able everywhere you go to honor him by doing the work that he's called you to and he gets the glory. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. Okay, Jesus said in Mark 16, 15 through 18, we're just about done. Go into all the world and preach the gospel, the good news to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that does not believe shall, be not, shall not be saved. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Not the person that you're laying hands on. The signs will follow you, the believer. Okay, that Christ is in working through you. Okay, in my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly poisonous thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He didn't say if and but, well, uh, no, they shall recover. No ifs, ands, buts, or maybes. They shall recover. That's the word of God. Jesus said it. So again, every chance Jesus got to heal someone, he went for it. And that's what we need to do. Okay. Now, I've said this before. If you start thinking, well, what if it doesn't work? Your mind is on yourself. What you need to do is you are a vessel a yielded vessel letting the Holy Spirit work through you. You be at rest. You speak the words of God with authority, getting the sickness removed, the disease, the devils, getting them. You just minister it. You speak it because you're representing Jesus on the earth. You speak it and then hell has to obey. Those things got to go. Because Jesus gave man authority. He gave us authority over every creeping, crawling, everything that moves on the earth. Genesis 1, 26 to 28, okay? So, viruses, cancer, colds, bacteria, 
It's a creeping, crawling thing that moves, right? How does it grow? No, you need to kill that thing in Jesus' name. You command it to go in Jesus' name. Okay, sorry. I'm just, I'm sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Is that a hashtag or something? I don't know. So anyway, if you're not born again, we're out of time. But if we're not born again, let's get you born again. And then I'm going to pray for you, okay? So again, repeat this with your and just mean it with your whole heart. Repeat after me. And God knows if you mean it. And then the Holy Spirit's going to come right in. And you're going to be sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Okay. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. And remember, you're a saint if you are born again. I believe that you died on the cross and paid for my sins forever. And I believe that God the Father raised you on the third day. Mm. I know you are alive now and you live forever. I ask you, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and change my life forever. Teach me your ways. Oh, Lord, I love it. Thank you, Lord. Baptize me with your Holy Spirit and fire. I want to be on fire for you. Hmm. I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. In your holy name, Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Welcome to the family of God. Yay, this is so good. So now, boom, the Holy Spirit has come in and recreated your spirit. Now you got to dive into the word of God so you can be transformed, right? Not conformed to the ways of the world. You want to put that stuff behind you and get transformed. So now I'm going to pray for you. Okay, for those of you who might be experiencing pain in your body, sickness, disease, all of it. Okay, now, I'm not going to be calling out specific diseases because head to toe covers all of it. Okay, in Jesus' name. So, in the name of Jesus, I speak life to you right now. In Jesus' name, I speak to all pain, any spirit, every spirit of pain, sickness, infirmity, Unclean spirits come out in Jesus' name right now. Now, in Jesus' name, I command every bit of sickness and disease to leave your body now. You be healed head to toes now in Jesus' mighty name. Pain, leave, go now. Now, in Jesus' name, I command you be healed completely in Jesus' name, amen and amen and say amen. Now, immediately, I want you to do something you couldn't do before, okay? I recognize that some things may be, you know, have been internal where now you have to go to the doctors or get something checked, but do something that you couldn't do before. And if God healed you now, comment below or send me a testimony. Visit the website at lisaboldo.com and contact me. Send me an email. If you know someone that needs healing, you know, for something in particular, I am happy to minister healing, you know, personally on the phone, you know, just send me an email, make sure you include your phone number. I've been doing this a lot because a lot of requests have been coming in. People are getting healed. It's wonderful. I haven't even had time to post, you know, any testimonies. I have to give them to the, the girl that works with me, but, um, for that stuff. So I am just so excited and if this has been a blessing to, to you tonight make sure that you share it on your page and wherever you can let's advance the kingdom of God together oh I'm just you know this is a message that you need to know and every believer needs to understand Christ in them in you the hope of glory so I just want to say I love you I bless you and I'll see you next time on the Victorious Life TV broadcast and I'll see you soon all right. God bless you. I love you in Jesus. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye.